The pace of innovation in AI has never been faster. In this video, I want to talk about why the recently released chatbots from Microsoft and Google are such a big deal, the challenges with releasing them, and how this will impact all of us. Both Microsoft and Google just released very advanced chatbots built on something called large language models. The idea is that you build a training model which basically ingests the internet. ChatGPT consumed more than 45 terabytes of text data and has more than 175 billion parameters. With so much data, it's the first time that a computer actually feels intelligent. The chatbot can write essays, it can program computers, and it can remember context about what was said earlier in the conversation. But the crazy part is that this innovation is setting up one of the biggest corporate showdowns in history with huge implications on the products that we use every single day. Microsoft acquired a 49% stake in OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, which is the first mover in this space. ChatGPT is the fastest application in history to reach 100 million active users in just two months. In fact, earlier this week, Satya Nadella from Microsoft announced that ChatGPT will get integrated into the Bing search engine and the Microsoft Edge browser. On the other side of the battlefield, you have Google, which has the most advanced technology and talent when it comes to artificial intelligence. Google has been crawling the web for literally decades, so in addition to having the brightest minds when it comes to AI, they likely also have the best data. Over the next few years, I expect the way that we find information is going to change dramatically, and there are going to be tons of products and companies that will be built off of the LLM, the large language model, as a base, and they're going to tune it for specific applications, like in programming, or law, or medicine. And so we're going to find that not only will search be disrupted, which it certainly will be, but also pretty much every other domain where information and software is in play. However, one of the big challenges in this space is safety. When you're training a large language model on the internet, you're going to incorporate a lot of inaccuracies and biases of the internet. There are tons of examples where the chatbot is flat out wrong. And that's actually called a hallucination, which I think is a great term for it. Here's an example of playing rock, paper, scissors, and the chatbot is convinced it won the game when it clearly hasn't. Another example would be if it said that Vim is better than Emacs, which is clearly incorrect, clearly hallucination. Who would ever think that? The hallucination rate of ChatGPT is between 15 and 20%, and Google's BARD is probably something similar. And so for any task where you really want precision or high reliability, these tools are not there yet. Beyond just making things up, though, there's a whole world of safety and bias issues. For example, if I ask who are the greatest athletes of all time, and the chatbot presents a long list of people, none of whom are women, or maybe no one from India or China or Asia, that feels like a problem, right? More than half of the world's population is excluded on that list. And there are a lot of open questions about how to handle political candidates or sensitive topics like abortion or gun control. And this is one area where I feel like Microsoft did something really smart by partnering with OpenAI. They get all the benefits of the innovation, but if ChatGPT says something racist or controversial, then Microsoft can wash their hands of it and say, hey, we're not affiliated with that. It's some experimental startup, which is pushing the boundaries of AI. On the other hand, Google has way more to lose. The idea of moving fast and breaking things works for startups, but when you have a product which is literally making hundreds of billions of dollars a year in revenue, then you have to be really, really careful that any new change or new innovation you make doesn't hurt your core product. In my opinion, that's why Google is moving much more slowly here. There are also questions here around attribution and how can Google or Microsoft link back to the source, the publisher of the information from which the chatbot derived the answer. Google's entire business model is based on the idea of sending traffic to advertisers who are promoting a product or information. And so they really have to be careful not to cannibalize that experience. Finally, let's talk about the direct impact for all of us. Will ChatGPT and Bard replace software engineers? Over the next few years, I do think that the more well-defined, well-scoped tasks will be increasingly done by AI. And so if you tell me that your job is to write for loops all day, to add in some unit tests, or do something else which is fairly mechanical, then yeah, you should be worried. There's a very good chance in the next two or five years, your job will almost entirely be done by a AI. But true software engineering is about so much more than writing code. It's about building trust. It's about leaving effective feedback on a code review. It's about working with your team to identify high impact projects. And these activities are uniquely human. They were not gonna be easily replaced by an AI or a machine. That's actually the point of the startup I'm building called Taro. The idea is that we help established engineers unlock the next level of productivity and impact by focusing on the non-coding parts of the job. Check it out at jointaro.com. And if you work at a company like Microsoft or Google or Meta, then you can actually reimburse the cost of Taro Premium to your employer by using the learning budget you have.
The AI battle we're seeing today between Microsoft and Google is going to shape our society for decades to come. And the innovation we're seeing is going to provide a huge amount of benefit to all of us. By the way, I learned that bard is an old English term. It refers to a poet, especially one who writes impassioned, lyrical, or epic verse. And that kind of makes me appreciate the name a lot more. I thought it was some sort of acronym, but it's actually a really nice word. I'm really excited to see what happens. It's a great time to be an engineer. It's a great time to be alive. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.